All right. A L R I G H T. I am back. It is me, Tom Soros. Do I have audio? One, two, three, four, five. Someone please tell me I have audio and we'll be good to go. Everything's kicking. Hello, Tiffany Gervais. How are you, my friend? Good to see you here. Tiff, Tiff, Tiff. Can you hear me? Scotty Soros. Cousin Scotty from Middle Tennessee. What is up, brother man? It's fun that Scotty will join us on the morning show. Wow. So it's been a while. It's been a minute. Been a minute since I did talk to Tom. I've been a little busy. I've been a little busy. We've been some places, you and I. We have. We've been around. I've been around the block a time or two. Uh, getting used to the blue, as they'd say. Um, a lot going on. Just a lot. Just a lot. Let's see. Mary's here. Hi, Mary. Tiffany's here. She can hear me. Uh, D Gush is here. Hey, D, what is shaking? Sandy Hughes. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. I woke up this morning at about 6 o'clock. My wife is overseas, but I woke up. Dog, you know, me. Oh, uh, what's up? Look, yeah, my daughter had a flight. Looked at her flight. She's landing. Open up my phone. Treat Williams is dead. The actor. And I'm like, ah, Treat Williams. Man, I love Treat Williams. What in the world happened to Treat Williams? Lo and behold, motorcycle crash. Wow. Thank you, D, for saying I look great. I feel great. Fe feeling pretty funky. Feeling pretty right. Still building from Ian. You know what, uh, Tiff? A lot of people are. A lot of people. Ian did more damage than people give it credit for. And a lot of people are still suffering. The coast is still gone. There's so much flooding damage. We've had, we've had a hard time. We've just had a very, very, very hard time. AMS conference is coming up next week. And I looked at uh, one of the hurricane things. And uh, one of the topics that's going to be discussed at the AMS conference next week is Ian the Cone versus the warnings. How people, the Cone stomps on the message of the warnings. I think that's a pretty good session. The other one is something about how to cover it from a national perspective. Who cares what you think from a national perspective? I tell you, we don't. <laughs> You're pumping water out of your house. You don't care how people covered it on the national level. We don't. What we care about is why people who are here didn't understand when I would say catastrophic flooding, what they're supposed to do. That's what hurts me the most. Anyway, yes, your cousin lived in Fort Myers and he said a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, Fort Myers bore the brunt of it all. Fort Myers all the way up to Sarasota crushed. And then we got our rain and we all got washed away. Speaking of rain, ta-da, rain chances are trash, just trash. Um, rain chances today about 30%. That is not good. That is not a lot of rain. No, see, it's just not. Not a lot of rain for us. I was hoping for more rain to th this week. My lawn, I could take you out there. My lawn looks like a crispy critter. But right now, we don't have good rain chances at all here in Central Florida. Not even a little bit. Rain chance at 30% is not good. Rain chance tomorrow doesn't improve much then either. Here's the deal. Today, all the bubbling is north. See what I'm talking about there? Storm potential. The upper level track is taking everything to the north. So Dallas, Mobile, Atlanta, even Jacksonville will get more rain today. See the way it stacks up there and goes just to the north of us? Well, watch this. Same thing tomorrow. Some of the outflow from some of that could make it in here, and it drifts a little farther to the north tomorrow. We could be talking about severe storms just to the north of Jacksonville, from Atlanta all the way up into Columbia, South Carolina, even into Myrtle but not in Central Florida. We may get just a dab of that moisture. This is what it's going to look like. Watch this. See the upper level system jetting along? Watch the hour by hour break out here. See that? Look at all that rough stuff up north and then not much, not a lot in Central Florida. Some of that lift goes from Atlanta to Charlotte and we don't get much. Heavier storms developing late, way up there, way up north. None of that coming into the heart of Central Florida, which is a super drag. Here's the way it looks for rain chances tomorrow. 30% chance of rain tomorrow as well. 30%. Diddly poo, really. I think 30% might be oversold. I mean, look how dry it is. There's a satellite image. You see the low in Dallas? Explosive convection up there around Little Rock. Trothiness there. Jetting just to the north of us. Watch it roll. 
High pressure out to the east has us with a wind flow from the south by southwest. What that is doing is that is pinning the east coast sea breeze and we are not getting rain. Watch it move now. The low comes out of Texas, slides right over into Louisiana, the lift going up through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Wind from the southwest here in Orlando, all across Florida, pinning that east coast sea breeze. And by tonight at 11, I'll be on the newscast going, well, basically another rain-free day. Not much happened. You see a little bubble of energy coming through Thursday. Thursday's your best chance of rain all week. Watch it. That's 7 o'clock Thursday, 10 p.m. into Friday. Still no rain. So what we're dealing with are daytime highs in the mid to upper 90s and heat index numbers that will choke you out like 100 to 105, which is bad for us. Talked to a friend of mine last night in Phoenix. They were talking about, oh, temperatures are going to be above 100 next week. But yeah, it's that dry heat. Here in Orlando, we get the real feel of more than 100 because of the humidity, and it's different. Here's the clouds and rain forecast. See that bubble of energy to the north? That's what I'm talking about. Some of that stuff up north, the outflow from that could get into you in Flagler County. It could. It might still this afternoon. But really, I think most of you stay dry. East Coast series is pinned. You see one long bubble there along the Cape. Eh, it's over. It's over. And then tomorrow, same thing, man. Wind from the southwest tomorrow pins that East Coast sea breeze. And when it does, we don't get any rain. There's Wednesday, 11 a.m. Let's go around. Will anything erupt? It does not. Temperatures right now. It is 11 a.m. It's 86 degrees in Orlando, 88 in Tampa with a real feel in the 90s. We're exactly where we were yesterday at the same time. So real quick, check on the tropics. Um, morons online have been talking about, oh my gosh, it's time for a big storm in the Gulf. Anything could happen. GFS has come. Stop that trash talk. Please don't listen to morons that don't know what they're talking about. Please don't. Um, temperature again is 86 degrees in Orlando, 87 in Kissimmee. Afternoon forecast today, mid-90s. Rain chances maybe 30 percent if it happens seven day forecast mid 90s today mid 90s on thursday mid 90s on friday you get the picture yes we see <clears throat> that's when i fell for the leader of the pack mm -hmm. all right all right all right all right hello you know what Mitra's not here it is taco tuesday let's talk about that mm -mm -mm -mm. love me some taco tuesday so, we're done there. Today's hat, compliments of Layla from the snotty school that my kids did not go to. My kids all go to really snotty schools, but they didn't go to Princeton. They went to the other ones. Um, oops, listen. What, Tiff? What'd you say? Good morning, Susan Burnett Green. How are you, babe? Sandy Hughes, when did you move to Michigan and where did you move to? Because, you know, I lived outside of Detroit. I lived on the east side in Gross Point Park for not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. Count them five years. Um, went over 91, 92, 93, 94, and 95. No, I'm lying. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000. Six different winters I was there. Parts of six different winters. Never again. Never again. Uh, if I were to win the lottery, I would love to have a house in Gross Point. Nuggets, they didn't crush them, Michael. They beat them by like four or five last night. But yeah, a four to one could have been a sweep. Had they not laid an egg, it would have been a sweep. It would have been, Michael. It should have been a sweep. I think Denver's under, underrated. I do. They played so well. You only listen to me. Thank you, Tiff. Moved in September. Okay, Sandy, so you made it through the winter. East Lansing, wow. You made it through the winter. Good for you. That, that's impressive. The winters there are just killer. I can't take them. I cannot take it anymore. Last winter, we were living in Michigan. I said, this is the year I get a snowplow. Never again am I doing it. I get a slow boat. Mm -hmm. Not going to use a snow shovel any longer. And that's the year I got the gig and we moved. Yeah. So we're never going back. Well, we go back to visit. But I have not been to Detroit since 2009. Six, sixers get here. Some damn fleet rumor coming here. Okay, cool. Sixers should have been in, man. Should have beaten Boston. Miami maybe not should not have been there. Should have been the Sixers versus the Nuggets. My opinion only. I thought the Sixers were the best team in the East all year and laid an egg down the stretch, whereas Denver got hot down the stretch. I heard the um, stat was something like 16-4. and four. 
We listen to no trash talk. We only listen to you. Oh, I know what you're talking about. When I said stop listening to those morons online, there are morons who do weather online who will, you know, oh my God, the world's ending, and then they don't have no responsibility for when it doesn't end. Yeah. People love them. They have big followings. That's cool. If you want to follow somebody on YouTube, follow me. Follow Jonathan. Jonathan's doing great for WKMG on the YouTube channel. Check him out. Uh, he's not full of crap. He went to Penn State. He's smart. Yeah. Much like so many of the talk show guys you see, Chris Haggerty. Shoot a cooter. That's why they play the game. Tell them Hags. That's true, brother. But I really think that the Sixers are better than Boston. <clears throat> they lost to Boston when they should have. They, they didn't. I don't know, dude, if they get tired. Do you remember, Hags, do you remember um, Chris, uh, not Chris Weber. <laughs> Everybody remembers Mr. Timeout, Chris Weber. Do you remember Eric Weber was a morning and noon anchor here at the Powerful KMG? You know, Eric, personality all his own. Love him or hate him, he was who he was. When he worked, I want to say he was working in Philly, at the cable channel in Philly, or it might have been Jersey. Could have been Jersey, might have been New Jersey. He went in to interview somebody, uh, the hockey team one night, and um, he was new in town. <laughs> this is how he kind of sealed his fate. The guy at the hockey guy said, ah, we didn't play well, weren't ready to play. He goes, what do you mean you weren't ready? I mean, the game was on schedule. The schedule came out last spring. You knew the game was going to be Saturday night. Why weren't you ready to play? And the guy's like, who is who's that? Who's that? And went off on him and pulled him out. And eventually, you know, they're like, dude, you can't work here. <laughs> and that was the end of him there. But I love that line. When people say, well, I just weren't ready to play. Um, what do you mean you weren't ready to play? You're professional, and the game is scheduled. So that's what I want to say to the Sixers when they're not ready to play against the Celtics, whom they had the lead on, and ha had that victory at home going, and then Embiid didn't score in the last five minutes. How do you lose that game? How do you allow the Sixers to beat you? How do you not pair up against Miami? Why are you not? I go on and on. See, don't tell me you weren't ready to play because you should have been ready to play. The schedule was made. You saw the game. You knew to be there at 7 o'clock and warm up and dunk that ball. I don't get it, but they do. And so, yep, yeah, after you, yeah. Okay, well, he, he's the guy who popped off, <laughs> who gave me the line, what do you mean you weren't ready to play? It's on schedule. You're a pro. Show up. It's like me going to work so I'm just not ready. <clears throat> My neck hurts a little. I'm not, I'm not ready to go on and do the weather. Uh, Tom, show starts at 4. Put on your makeup. Put on your eyebrows and let's go. Suck it up, buttercup. Here's a big old glass of suck it up and here's your straw. Suck it up. Do it. Play the game. Um, sometimes you're just not ready. I should apply to the sports department. KMG. We're loaded, brother. We have three people. We're done. You can't get in at WKMG, the sports office, and you can't get into TV sports very much anymore anyway. Every child in America who loves sports, I want to be a sportscaster. Guilty. That's why I went into television. I was a radio announcer who wanted to be Brent Musburger. That ages me, I know. But that's who I liked. I liked when Brent Musburger would go, you're looking live at Soldier Field in Chicago. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to be Brent Musburger. I want to be in Chicago at the ballgame. Um, you got to wear makeup on TV or you look dead. Like, see how I'm reflecting here this morning? If you don't wear te TV makeup, on a TV set, you don't look good. You don't. Um, Timmy Doyle! What's up, WKU? WKU. Hey, man, did you see where WKU finished in the top three in the Hearst Awards again this year? The Hearst Awards are like the NCAAs of the broadcast journalism world, and WKU has finished in the top ten for something like 30 years in a row and finished number three this year, and I get all excited because here in my house, you know, my bride went to North Carolina. My oldest child went to North Carolina. Baby girl is a UF kid. Um, they're all kind of journalist, journalistically inclined um, or public policy inclined. And so, you know, everybody at UNC thinks it's the Harvard of the South. <laughs> and so I'm always like, hey, why do you discredit Western Kentucky? You know, everybody's, well, it's not Columbia, it's not Syracuse. Yeah, yeah, it is. In the broadcast journalism world, it is. Yeah, it is, it is. And I always say, if we had finished in the top five, you do have a glow about you. No makeup needed. Oh, today I'm, I'm all moisturized. Um, but uh, in, imagine if in basketball we'd finished in the top five for the last 10 years, in the top 10 for the last 30. Everybody would be talking about Western Kentucky, but it's in broadcast journalism that we finished 
in the top. What do you mean eight? Western Kentucky, that's why. I don't know what that means. I don't know what you mean by that. Scotty, I know you're a, uh, a loser from Mitsu. Ah! MTSU. Anyway, we finished um, third in the Hearst Awards this year. And I was up in Boston, family's graduation from that snotty school she went to. And I'm um, I'm looking, at them, oh, look, look, Western Kentucky finished third in the Hearst Awards. And I open up and show it to him like, yeah, but number one was the North Carolina Chapel Hill. Thanks. Thanks. We finished third. My bride school finished first. Hey, that's great. That's great. And who came in second? Gators. Shelby School. Even though Shelby is not, she's a criminology person, not a journalism person. She does podcasting stuff. That's kind of new journalism. She's kind of in. We all know the best J school is. It's not the cutest, brother. I know you. I know Northwestern thinks it's them. Syracuse thinks it's them. Columbia, Mizzou thinks it's them. It's not. It's not. Lots of reporters left you recently, I noticed. You know, not many. Um, it's, it's, it is Western Kentucky, not eight. I don't know what that means, Scotty. What does not eight mean? I, I'm, I'm getting lost in the feed. I don't know what you mean. I'm sure you're making a funny joke, and your stupid cousin's not getting it. Because I'm sure you're making fun of me of some sort. But okay. Um, some of our reporters have left. Let's see. Carol, Carolina left. Carolina? Cardona left. She wants to do something else. Who else left? Who else recently left? I don't know. I can't remember. But all, all the big ones are staying. You know, all the A-teams, um, the investigators are all here. Treasure Roberts loves it here. She's staying. Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Amanda. Yeah, Amanda did do something else. That's right. But you got to remember, too, TV's a tough game, and Amanda just had two kids, two sons. She's rocking. She's a mom. All of a sudden, your priorities change. It's that story that I always tell about Tiger Woods when everybody's going, oh, Tiger Woods, okay, there again, there again, Maris got engaged. And the guy who's going to marry her lives down south. Hard to be engaged and married and live apart. People do it. They pull it off. But Maris didn't leave under duress. And Amanda did not leave under duress. And Carolina Cardona was not fired. Just wants to do something different. Yep. It happens. It, oh man, when you're, when you're fighting... I mean, dude, I've been fighting this game a long time, and it's, um, I love it. I love TV. I've loved every minute of it. Well, not every minute. Most minutes of it I love. Yeah, I, I used to, you know, go to work with my dad and watch him work and sweat and fix engines and tractors, and it was hard, man. And I don't, you know, I don't do that. I, I decided I did not want to work out in the heat. I got lucky and got a job inside. That's just me. I didn't want to do it. So, um, but working out in the field, being a reporter, and then you, you turn like you know, 30 and you look around, you, have, you got a kid or two, and you're like, I can't do this. I got to go home and raise my kids. She has options, so they bail out. Maris wants to get married. She's in love with this guy, and he works down south, and so she had to go down south to be with him. So they're not leaving because they're angry. You know, his brother replaced me at one point. They, Crystal Moyer knows, you know what I'm saying, girlfriend, look at Crystal, she was separated from the guy she married, one was in Jacksonville, one was here, it was a mess, and now they're married, and they're both here. Yes, TV, TV business can be, it's hard on the pimp, as we say, it's hard, it's hard. Life's tough, there you go, life changes, and sometimes we got to move. Correct, you know, I met Mitra, my bride, she was the weekend anchor at my second station. People are like, oh, I didn't know Mitra ever worked in TV. Yeah, she did. But when you're young and growing up like that, and we moved to Columbus, Ohio, and I was able to get Christmas off, she couldn't. You know, until all of a sudden, we get married. What am I going to do, leave her at Christmas every year? No. How stupid is that? So we, um, we started going to, one year we do my family, one year we do her family, back and forth, back and forth. And to get both of us get the Christmas off, I got Gained 15. You did? You gained 15 subscribers in a month? You should keep your YouTube thing going. YouTube's the future for a lot of people. Yes. I agree. I agree. All right. I got to get off here and go do my thing. Uh, remember, the rain is not going to be much today. If you missed the weather in the first part, just back it up. I'll get off here and you replay this later. Um, I am, I am. Best thing that happened to you. What's that, Crystal Moyer? Moving to Florida, marrying Mitra, having the kids. I don't know.
Because it's hard to say which is the best thing each step along the way. And each job along the way. Everybody always says, what's the best job here? We're coming up for tournament. Yes! What tournament? Baseball? Your boys still playing baseball? Let me know, dude. I'd love to see you, Hags. You skinny mini. I can't believe you dropped 60 LBs, bro. You lost a Backstreet Boy. <laughs> yeah, man, that's great. That's great. Sandy Hughes, bye. You have a great day, too. Went to my childhood, too. Oh, uh, really? What beach town's that? Yeah, what days are you coming in, Hex? Well, wait, in a few weeks. Okay, see, next week I'm off. Hanging around, but I'm off. All right, so let me know. Let me know. Let me know. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Leave a comment. I'll log back on and answer all your commentos. And uh, go have a great Taco Tuesday. Think about Treat Williams. Poor guy died in a motorcycle crash. It breaks my heart. Wild. Don't know that beach. I'm going to look it up right now. Go make it a great Tuesday. Eat a taco for Tom. Taco Tuesday. Yeah. I'll try to get back on here maybe this week while I'm alone. Maybe manana. You never know. Peace.